humanity is affecting in significant ways the planet on which we live. We've never had to think about that before. We've never had to fold that into our thinking. It's always been enough to think, if I take care of myself and my community and know that everyone else is doing their best to take care of themselves and their community, well, the big picture, it'll work out. Unfortunately, that no longer holds true. And we need people who are willing to think differently, like all of you, like our young people, to challenge that status quo <coughs> way of thinking. And on the other level, if we have to rethink space, so must we rethink time. Because the pace of change has accelerated so much that we can no longer wait for our crises to hit us before we decide to do something about them. Fortunately, we have the knowledge, the understanding, the science to see the issues coming at us. But we're still convinced that we'll have time once it actually gets here, if it gets here, to fix things. Whether it be you know, crisis around uh, you know, poverty or resource depletion or climate change or you know, whatever comes at us. Our instincts don't match up with what science is actually telling us. And in this case, our instincts might be wrong. We might have to start acting in a more active, proactive, engaged way with the world around us. But that fresh level of thinking is not going to come from people for whom the long term is simply a linear extension of the short term in which they live. Someone who's got a mortgage, a house, a career, a responsibility, a family, Yes, they think long term, but all too often long term is I'll set aside X percent of my salary every month and you know, 30 years from now when I retire, I'll have enough to retire on. It's a linear extension of the present, whereas the long term we have to be engaged with is perhaps rethinking what the world's going to look like in 20, 30 years. And for that, we need you. We need you for whom change is the only constant you've known from high school to university, into the job market, from living at home to living in rest, to living in an apartment, to buying a house. I mean, your lives are in constant evolution, and you're ready to engage with some of the big challenges that we have to look at if we're going to get to where we need to go. And the big barrier to that is the fact that we're in a society in which the individual, instead of being empowered, by the amount of information we have at our fingertips, literally, with the 24-hour news cycle, the thousands of channels on TV, or the sum total of human knowledge available to us on our smartphones in our pockets, if we believe Wikipedia, <laughs> if we don't have a Blackberry yesterday. <laughs> Swear to God, if the iPhone 5 had been the iPhone 5 and not the 4S, you know, I would have ditched my berry. <laughs> So instead of feeling empowered by that amount of information that we have at our fingertips, we're overwhelmed. We see what's going on at the other side of the town, the other side of the country, the other side of the world, and it's so big, and it's so far from us, it's so overwhelming. Who are we to say, I can make a difference, I can change the world? But you can. Changing the world doesn't happen through one person in a, in a position of power flipping a switch or making the decision. It happens through the incremental, gradual, accumulated actions of millions upon millions <coughs> of people acting in a mindful way. Jacques Cousteau, the undersea explorer, used to laugh whenever he'd hear someone trying to motivate people by saying, you can make a difference. You can make a difference. Every single one of us makes a difference in the world with every single decision we take. Whether it's for the better or for the worse is entirely dependent on whether or not we're aware of the consequences broadly around the world of any given decision, like buying fair trade coffee <coughs> versus regular coffee, or decisions through time of decisions we take now that will have a consequence 30 years from now, a generation from now, 100 years from now. <coughs> so our capacity 
to understand the power that each and every one of us has, not sometime in the future when you're bankers and lawyers and PhDs and whatever, but right now, as individuals, as consumers, as citizens, your capacity to be agents of change within your peer group, within your family, within your school community, within your, within your neighborhood, within your province, within your country, is entirely up to you. What are your passions? What are you interested in? How do you want to connect with the world? And if you focus on that, and some of you saw this coming, it'll lead you to politics inevitably. <laughs> because if you're interested in local issues and what's happening to the landfill nearby, you're going to run up against the municipal council and municipal politics. If you're worried about your tuition fees or health care <laughs> for your grandmother, you're going to run up against, uh, against the provincial governments and the provincial MPs. And if you're passionate about international affairs or big, broad questions, you're going to run up against federal politics. But you'll come to it from a place of engagement around issues, around questions you have. And it won't be about saying, you know, who, who looks better on the campaign posters, or do I like red better than blue than I like orange. I mean, it, it, it comes from a place where you are actually tied in and passionate about particular issues that you've weighed in on, that connect you to the world around you. Because every single human being shares one basic need, once you get past the need for food and shelter and clothing. We are a social <coughs> animal, and we fundamentally need to matter to our tribe. Now, however we define our tribe, we need to feel relevant to the people who matter to us. We need to know that the actions we have, the impact we have on the world around us, makes the world a slightly better place.